call the meeting to order. We need to approve the agenda as printed. So we'll move. Second. Motion made and second to approve the agenda as printed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Terry. Public comment on the agenda. Seeing none, hearing none. Communication shared by solid waste board members. All on there? No. Nope. Okay, we snuck by. Approval of minutes, August 2nd, 2023, open and closed session. Approval, approval. I'll second. Yeah. Motion been made and second to approve the minutes of August 2nd, 2023, open and closed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. We're right down into the 2024 exciting time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. Um, I guess, you know, Pat and I, after the, the budget kickoff meeting, Pat and I had a meeting with um, the executive staff and the administration staff, court counsel, and just made sure that we were all on the same page that, you know, staff will put together our, our draft budget, um, but it was okay to review with you in advance, um, get some feedback from the solid waste board, and then we kind of wrap it up and then present it to the executive for his, you know, ultimate approval before it goes to come board. So, um, so everyone was reviewing this with you today, and then when we're done, we'll uh, make whatever changes that come of this meeting, and then it'll get sent off to um, finance, and then we'll eventually um, staff. And I don't know if Pat will be invited or not, but eventually we'll meet with the executive group sometime in late August or early September to, to go through the final questions. So I'll see if Ethan wants me there. Yeah. So I don't know if you can pull up some of those. Uh, just pull up the budget memo first. Yeah, so I, I, again, I apologize. This all has been kind of fluid over the last few weeks, uh, pulling this together, getting diverted in some other directions. So I didn't get a chance to send this out. But we can, it, it's, um, some of the documents are changing. I, I just continued putting this memo together more for your information. Some of the information will be used in uh, budget narrative document, which is changing a little bit, but. But essentially, what we're looking at is um, we're, we are going to request a couple of changes to our table of organization to help with operational uh, issues and efficiency. Uh, we're going to oh, wait a minute. What the heck? That's not right. That first bullet is completely wrong. That's from last year. So. Um, What we are planning to do is what we are planning to do is um, modify uh, titles and grades of our two existing solid waste associates, uh, moving them from um, what is it, fifty nine grade fifty grade fifty nine to grade sixty one. So essentially changing them from a solid waste associate to an associate four versus an associate three, um, tweaking their position descriptions to um, add a little more financial uh, responsibility, whether it be invoicing, um, you know, doing some, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so currently they are already doing a lot of these tasks and which is comparable, like comparable to the admin four more so. So this is just kind of bumping them up and getting them compensated for some of the things, and we'll add additional duties as well, kind of justify them bumping yeah. up. Yeah. So that that is in our request. So it's essentially just adjusting their salary grade and tweaking the duties of the position to, to kind of match what um, 
what admin fours are in highway, some of the duties that they provide, what admin fours are in land and water, and airport has an admin four. So, um, well, that's in there right now. And the one new position we're looking to add is we're calling it a solid waste associate. So it comes in at that grade 59, but it's someone that is more focused on uh, assisting with grounds maintenance duties. Um, there is going to be some scale crossover, kind of a, a person that could float, float around and do a variety of duties, whether it's <coughs> assisting with lawn maintenance, whether it's assisting with putting away uh, TVs and appliances, um, helping out on the scale, you know, helping out wherever they can to, to give us a little more flexibility uh, not only in the summertime when the lawn this summer hasn't been too bad, but when the lawn needs to be mowed on a regular basis, uh, but in the winter months when, you know, plowing needs to happen, shoveling, salting, um, we, we haven't had much luck in getting uh, summer seasonals the last few years, and this, this would end up being kind of a person in a full-time capacity that would provide those services. So in this budget, we're not gonna have a request for any temporary summer seasonals uh, included. We'll, we'll just include this new position. So, um, so it'll be it, it'll be a flex, kind of a flex position. Um, park, is it parks or facilities? Facilities has a person that's kind of similar that we patterned. Um, we patterned uh, the position kind of after where it's kind of a jack of all trades kind of position. Um, and they would, this person would then report to Patsy. Um, and she worked in between with Ryan, our solid waste supervisor, you know, coordinating in inside help versus outside help, but it would be a direct report to Patsy. So that's what we've submitted to. Um, Submitted to HR as far as changes to the payroll organization. So we go from um, the current 17 uh, up to 18 full time employees. What, um, if I knew, what, what happened with the social media person? Would you have to Are we filming that? Or? We, we are going to fill that. What, what I guess what I wanted to do is we haven't gotten, we haven't gotten feedback yet as far as these new position or changes to our table of organization. But kind of holding off, I was thinking we were going to meet in late August with the executive to get feedback whether or not you know these requested changes are going to be acceptable to, to the executive and his staff. Um, and then once we get a better determination of that, then move forward with um, the recruitment of, of a new um, a new person to replace. The communication person. Now we've we've tweaked the title and <clears throat> used a little bit to, I guess, better reflect what what we're expecting from the position. Uh, Educate. I think it's education and outreach specialist is what we've changed the title to. Um, Mark Havik in, in HR has reviewed our position description changes and has approved it. Is just waiting for the go ahead. To get it posted and, and to try to get it refilled. But in the meantime, Kathy's just been um, catching the minimal stuff associated with uh, social media and, and some of the, the duties that are being performed to Jessica. So, but that's a good question. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Next big item is um, talking about tipping fees. Um, we, we as the Bow Group have, you know, continued to meet on a regular basis, and um, I think the overall goal is at some point to try and get consistent tipping fees, you know, across all three borders. So whether you're going, you call out of Gamey County or you call Winnebago County or Brown County, everything stays pretty consistent from a disposal fee standpoint. Um, so what Adegami was proposing for this year, as well as Brown County, is 
we we started tracking out of county tonnage differently. And when I say out of county, it's out of the tri county region. So we get Fond du Lac tons or Green Lake County tons or other tons. We track it separately, and it's hand, it's handled differently from an accounting standpoint within our our regional solid waste agreement. It turns into more shared ton versus, you know, we're competing for this out of county tonnage. So, um, and the thought was, is, you know, maybe out of county stuff shouldn't come in at the same rate as what our in county communities pay. So, what we're proposing is an out of county rate of $58 a ton. Um, that would be a $6 increase to what? They're currently being charged. Um, what we're also proposing and have built into our documents here is a, a gate rate of $56 a ton. So that's a, another $4 increase to um, what it was, what it is currently at 52. And then to take care of our, our signing municipalities, we're looking at uh, a rug rate or signing municipality rate. Uh, with the three dollar discount in there, so fifty three dollars a ton, um, and the fifty eight fifty six will then match what Allegheny County is proposing. Brown County is a little bit of a wild card because they they're having some problems with people wanting to continue using their transfer station instead of hauling to their south landfill, so they're trying to create some sort of leverage to get people instead of inundating their waste transfer station try to get people to take it direct to the landfill so their tipping fees are a little wonky but and then this aligns us well with Allegheny and should um, I guess should prevent people seeking calling and searching for the cheapest rate and then end up bringing kind of down to our transfer station, then we have to pay to haul it up to our It just doesn't make <coughs> trying to get a consistent, consistent rates across the board. So it'll be interesting how that affects tonnage overall. Yeah, it's good. people, you know, can't they can't beat the system <laughs> anymore. So they'll either, you know, they won't look for that advantage in whatever it, it is there any disadvantage to us? Switching to this, mm -hmm. I don't think so. No, we're already asking customers where the material comes from, so we don't have to really do anything differently other than set up a rate table and so on. And, and it's on the honor, you know, if they say that it's coming in from on row and it's really coming in from Green Lake, we're not going to make a difference. Yeah, but uh, overall, it gets us back. It could, like John was saying, it's up to speed with the other county, the partner county. And we don't have to deal with the shopping around where like, suddenly we're inundated because we have lower rates than other gamings as a bowl or the group, so we end up having to pay more now because you know the customers try to save two dollars and we're spending eight dollars more oh, to ship yeah. that material. Yeah. So and also, you know, some of the 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 site uh, down in Berlin, I mean, their shipping fees are considerably higher than ours. So uh, I don't know that even a, you know, an out of county bump that we're talking about is going to have a whole lot of impact on, on that. So, but we'll have to we'll have to monitor things as we go. But well, I definitely like the idea because it, there you know, there was we're moving more towards making one decision, right? And and that makes a lot of more sense. In, yeah, and like I mentioned, you know, in the past we have been kind of chasing all this other waste from other counties and you know, trying to trying to compete against Allegheny and Brown for right. whatever tonnage. And now with this current way we handle the uh, county, it's shared. So it doesn't matter you know who's who's getting it in the door, it's all ends up being shared. So great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um the landfill gas power sales, uh, it's kind of a wild card, uh, but uh, I adjusted it up a little bit. Last year we had 400, or this year we have 400,000. We've already exceeded that through seven months. 
Uh, so I bumped it up to 600,000 in revenues. Um, you know, the WPS rates are obviously not the greatest, but they're, you know, they're relatively holding and based on the gas that we're collecting and, and how we're maintaining our uptime for the engines. I think 600,000 is reasonable for next year if things continue uh, continue on, on the same page as what we're doing now. Now we're, we're exploring some other options and we're gonna have hopefully a presentation for you in September, the second meeting in September with uh, another option that might, um, you know, might have the opportunity to increase revenues by, you know, let's say 20% from what uh, WPS is, is providing right now. Um, but at this point, we don't, we don't know if that change is going to happen. So we'll just stick with a conservative number uh, for power sales. We started uh, trying to estimate, uh, you know, monies that we're going to, oh, I'm sorry, interest income. Um, interest income is up. Uh, it's up quite a bit in, in 2023 uh, actuals compared to what we had budgeted. Um, I reached out to finance and, and had them look into their crystal ball and see what they could project for interest rate for uh, the general fund investing and then interest rates for uh, our long-term care account funds. And so they provided me some conservative information and plugged it into the spreadsheet and it spits out roughly $605,000 estimated in interest revenues uh, versus um, I think it was 407, uh, 407 less this year. So about a $200,000 increase. Uh, signing municipalities, we've, we've tried to, um, you know, try to project what we're going to see from commodity sales, um, plug that information into the Kathy's magic spreadsheet that um, allocates costs between the municipality and the county and figure out, you know, 18 months from now what the, what the, reimbursement is going to be uh, for our municipalities. So we, um, commodities are not doing the best right now compared to uh, previous year. So we ratcheted that down and um, instead of $200,000 being returned, we're looking at $75,000 being returned to municipalities. Um, capital outlay kind of goes, if, can we go back to yep. I was just thinking of, of probably something stupid, but it's like every year we do an end of year calculation of how much revenue we have. And then we either allocate it out or have municipalities pay. Do you it make any sense to put a line item in there where that flattens that out? You know, plug in some money. And that's in there, and and then so then you don't have to worry about this all the time from year to year. You mean the jump from year to year? Yeah. Well, what I proposed like four or five years ago when we when we reviewed that was something based more on a monthly basis. Um, unfortunately, you know what what I proposed at that time it was so variable that they could be charged one month or they could be receiving money back another month, and they and it didn't go over very well. So um, I am looking at numbers again, and I think that there may be a way of, of coming up with um, kind of like how we handle one of our other contracted customers. Um, it's going to be uh, a monthly amount to pay back them based on the amount of prizes coming in that they bring into the system for that month. Um, I guess numbers like to start to cashing out, but I am I am looking into how we can do that on a monthly basis rather than doing an end of the year lump sum. It's just the kind of year we're making that bond payment to the body yeah. county this year. So it is not it's not in the 24th okay month. And, and that that saved us 73 um, yeah about 70 yeah. It would still be market based. The monthly payment would still be market based, so it could change from month one by five. five yeah, yeah. Um, well, what like I'm trying to do is get away from the fluctuation in, in well, way off in the well, budget. I, yeah, I I guess previously to a couple of years ago, it was never even budgeted, so it was zero 
and then we were either giving away giving back you know hundreds of thousands of dollars or fifty thousand dollars and it was like it just stuck out like a sore thumb like why are we budgeting anything for this so we started trying to estimate that it's you know it's it's tough to predict yeah markets are so variable it is difficult to predict what it's going to be 18 months in the future um you know we get i've been going on more than three year average we just happen to have a huge spike in the last year and a half and then going forward we just had a huge drop so it's kind of trying to moderate it over three years um rather than just last year so just hoping to stabilize it a little bit but um it's just the nature of the piece i think in that one with the markets the way they are you know speaking from the point of view of the towns it's easier for them to budget a specific amount of money that they have to pay. And then if they get some back, okay, that's revenue for next year. Yeah. And they can work that into their budget, whether it's, you know, a hundred dollars or $5,000, you know, yeah. it, that's, that's always, easier for them to deal with it that way. And that's always kind of been the, yeah, we well, always heard. charge the five dollars or ten dollars for some tipping fee, and then at the end of the year we can give that back to them plus revenue if we do. I mean, that, that's we always try to steer towards a break even where you're paying five dollars a ton. We want to make sure that at least the, our costs are covered with that five dollars a ton, and then if there's money at the end, giving it back. Then we, mm -hmm. Yeah, and in the past, I think solid management board we've. Um, when when the the rug program didn't break even when they had a deficit we would end up subsidizing basically the solid waste management board was saying okay well yeah you guys didn't make any profit you actually owe us thirty thousand but we're just kind of at that we'll start over at zero again. Yeah. Okay, forget about my question. Well, we try, we, we try to take the, the big difference between the budgeted amount of zero and. Then we show, you know, returning three hundred thousand dollars. You're we're trying to at least bridge it a little bit, so it's not quite a difference between budget and actual. Uh, <laughs> um, as far as capital outlay goes, capital outlays. Yeah, so this varies from year to year. You know, we use our capital improvement plan, which is the five-year plan that we try to project, you know, what are going to be the big impacts, $100,000 projects uh, that are capitalized and, uh, are greater. And then we just look at some of the, you know, internal things, some of the smaller, whether it's vehicle replacements or UTVs or uh, some other things, you know, the 40 cubic yard containers. So I guess this is what we put together. Um, the Snow road landfill equipment, storage garage, and the office renovation are in this year's budget, but we're just we're just we just haven't been able to get into that. And instead of carrying projects over, finance doesn't like it when we carry projects over. If we can rebudget, it makes things easier for them. So we're just going to put those back in the budget for 2024. Both of these items, we're going to end up having to hire. Um, contract with an architect, architectural firm, um, because these building changes are going to happen in the city of Oshkosh. So you have to go through the, the city process for that. Um, and then based on the actual construction costs, we're going to have to bid the projects out um, and then bring it to the board to approve storage garage construction improve the office renovation that's no reference. So, so those those two are in at 80,000 and 120,000. Um, we have a replacement pickup truck for uh, the landfill here, uh, $40,000. We are able to use the state contract that bids out vehicles on an annual basis. So it's more or less, we just get the current uh, bid documents for 23 and then project for 2024. It's pretty simple. It's pick and choose. And it makes the procurement really easy. Now, the last time we bought a pickup truck, it took uh, a year to get. Um, I'm hearing some horror stories from other departments, facilities, and highway that vehicles are still uh, top, 
tough to get from a, a delivery time frame, but um, I guess we'll look to we'll look to get if approved, we'll look to get something ordered as, as soon as possible um, to, I guess, hope for uh, mid-year 2024 delivery of a year, but you just never know now. Do we ever, I, I know we thought about it or whatever, but utilization of electric vehicle, electric truck. That <laughs> well, we, at one point we talked about like a hybrid, like when we bought the Equinox, um, you know, to do a, a wrap with some advertising on it, maybe have like a hybrid vehicle. Um, I know back probably 10 years ago, I was driving around in Appleton and this delivery vehicle came by. I can't remember the company, but it says, you know, like this, this vehicle is powered by renewable um fuel and it was like they were taking uh waste oil from co waste cooking oil converting they had converted the vehicle to run on waste cooking. so so but we opted to just get in uh an equinox and not a hybrid vehicle at that time so flux capacity the flux capacity <laughs> i'm not sure where we charge it if it was electric vehicle here well maybe ultimately we'll have a station there will be there will be a discussion about that in September when we're talking about right. How it's like you, you know I don't know what the comparisons are of, of you know like how many miles you put on that vehicle. I'm assuming it's not a it's not know, a ton of miles, no. not a ton of miles. So it's like the cost comparison. I'm sure electric vehicles are more, but there still ends up being you know I mean. There might be uh, make some sense to think about it. I guess or whatever. I mean, it's like, did it, does the state contract allow for the electric? I didn't see the pickup truck. No, uh, I would not recommend that. No, the pickup truck is always hauling something, and their their efficiency goes way down. And between the stops, to, to recharge goes way down. Mm -hmm. Or just finding that out. Okay. Yeah. It's going to have a plus fast. That's why you put your fast fire on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. We have an endless supply of fuel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have one sitting in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, Replacement UTV for the Snow Road landfill. We've been nursing along an old John Deere Gator over at that site. Um, and it's in need of, it's a 2011, it's in need of numerous repairs that uh, kind of outweigh you know, the, uh, the value of, of keeping it. So um, we've had really good luck with uh, Kubota uh, diesel UTVs uh, at this site. And so the thought is to get an equivalent Kubota diesel uh, for the snow road site. Uh, then we can, you know, cross use the parts and, and different things. Uh, and then we we end up selling the the uh, we actually have two old Gator units. One is non functional, but we end up selling the the old units on the surplus website. So uh, that's twenty five thousand dollars is the estimate we got. Cassie's big project for 2024 is going to be a replacement of the unattended scale, the big uh, 10 by 80 foot unit with the uh, um, kiosk out there where there's communication back and forth with the scale. He punches in uh, what the waste type in, it's got a badge reader on it. Um, it's really the transactions are really quick uh, for the account customers. It would just be upgrading, putting in a new scale. And then upgrading the kiosk uh, to the current technology. Uh, I think we still, a lot of gaming is going to the ground on this too, where there's no communication, where the driver is solely responsible for inputting the right uh, code or what material they're carrying. And we still would like to keep the communication between the unattended scale and the scale person. 
So uh, first is just letting the driver kind of pick your choosers. So, so uh, Kathy got uh, estimate, and um, so we've got that at about two hundred fifty thousand, a little more than what was included in the CIP. But uh, hopefully, when the bids come in, uh, we'll be able to get that under two fifty. Um, you know, as we transition through, you know, closed site landfill work and uh, whatnot, we're finding the need for some different types of equipment uh, on, for use on site. Um, we've been using this um, older John Deere 310. Um, it's kind of a loader backhoe. It's got a loader bucket on the front and a backhoe on the back. Uh, it's wheeled. Um, it has worked fairly well, uh, but we're finding the need for uh, a track. It's essentially a track skid steer with a bucket on it. And you can have other attachments that work with the skid steer. So we rented one earlier this year. Uh, we were using it for doing some um, cover repairs, topsoil repairs uh, on site here. Uh, we also rented um, brush cutter mower that, that runs off the front of the sheet, and that was a, a much easier to mow around the well huts. Rather than going through by foot and weed whacking around the well huts, we were able to run a piece of equipment up around and and um, make a lot of progress in that. Um, so that would be also used on site lower areas of the site around trees where we can get in site around the trees. Um, the other thing that the other accessory is the fork. Just forks to go in it. So it comes with a bucket, forks, and um, a lower back for the carbon machine. Yeah, we're, it, we're, they're, they're, they've really become prevalent. We've seen contractors on site that have gone away from the wheeled loader backhoes and they come with these little compact track um, loaders and they're re real low center of gravity. They're really maneuverable. They don't tear up. You know, they don't tear up the hill. They're easy on easy on the grass. And um, so uh, we think that would be a very nice uh, addition to the fleet for as we continue working to care for these, uh, you know, these older closed line hill sites. So, and then of course, to uh, be able to utilize it at uh, both sites, we would need a trailer to haul it between the sites. So we've got a heavy duty equipment trailer. So the track loader estimate with the accessories, 100,000. The equipment trailer, 25,000. And then we've been regularly uh, changing out containers from older 30 yard units uh, that we had that are carryover from our container rental and lease program that are falling apart and replace, replacing them with 40 cubic yard units, um, which give us a little more capacity on the ramps. Um, so we don't have to pull them quite as often. I'll say a little better looking than some of the old uh, rusty ones. So, the two of those, 24000 uh, So, right now we've got $664,000 in capital outlay. And the way that works with finance, we enter it in as a capital item, uh, whether it's uh, equipment or improvements or whatnot, there's different codes for that. But then it gets backed out by a close to assets. And what it ends up doing is landing in our S, our fixed asset um, schedule, and then ends up on the depreciation. So they'll assign, um, you know, an estimated life for each one of these capital items, and then create a depreciation account for each one of those, and then it'll show up as depreciation. So it doesn't hit directly hit the bottom line in current twenty four. So. Um, at one time, the memory approved and is already here that, that we were looking at a, uh, I mean, a, a sorter, a robotic sorter for the recycling. Did that ever happen? Or is that this it's, year? It's a shovel ready project for the MRF. Um, so right now, we're waiting to hear back from our, uh, we applied for a flipper grant, federal grant oh, okay. for to help fund that. And so um, as soon as we hear back uh, regarding that grant, we have we have money in here. It's just a matter of we wanted to see if we're going to get the grant oh, sure, first, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we'll be able to hit the ground with it. So hopefully, um, the last update I heard was we made it to round two, 
and um, we should hear back in the summer okay. for that EPA grant. So that's coming soon. Coming soon, yeah. Yeah, I imagine uh, we'll we'll try to get it rolling this year and hopefully have it, you know, scheduled over finished by early next year. Yeah. It'll be an interesting time for a tour. We'll have for that Absolutely. install pretty cool technology. Have you ever been over that? This one. Interesting. Yeah. It's picture just a small little building. <laughs> and you get there and it's like, whoa. <laughs> Now I understand why you don't want the yeah. recyclables in plastic bags. Yeah. Now I understand why you can't buy a person Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's loud. Is it still so loud? <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing we invested in this year is uh, headphones that actually cancel the noise, and then the, the sure guy will be able to speak through a microphone so you can hear exactly what they're saying at your direct service. Which is really nice. <laughs> we don't lose our voices anymore. We don't have to shout over and just like people hear maybe a third of what we're actually saying. So, yeah. So, um, the last item here is you know, architect, engineer. Um, both provides us with some estimates for each of the cost centers, whether it's administration or snow road or co disposal, uh, long term care, landfill gas. And then we look at kind of the special projects. So, I mean, the, the consistent things that they handle for us on an annual basis kind of stay pretty similar. I mean, they go up a little bit here and there, but uh, the extras, again, that'll Happen again in, in 2024. We started the land, Sunnyview Landfill Mass Master Planning efforts. We hope to uh, see some draft information here this fall. Uh, but my guess is we're going to have more that will carry over into 24 uh, as we work toward fine tuning the game plan for development, further development of this uh, site as well as across the street. So there's going to be some more engineering. Uh, included in 801 in 24. Um, the Snow Road Landfill NR 141 remedial actions. Uh, we Earlier this year, we submitted our, our report, uh, which was a culmination of work for probably a year and a half, um, the DNR, and actually we're going to be meeting with the DNR people next week, Tuesday, to talk through the report. And you know what are some of the next steps that we're going to have to uh, to uh, do at the site uh, as more as it relates to the horizontal groundwater extraction system. You know we we'd really like to, um, if at all possible, keep that system off um, and look at other options for uh, source control. So it'll be interesting to hear feedback with. You know what are what the DNR thoughts are for for us moving forward. But there's a bit of a wild card as far as what we're going to be required to do. Chris, uh, Chris had both give me some pretty high estimates, but I haven't included uh, all that information in in this in this budget at this point because it's a little bit up in the air. But I did include some additional engineering analysis as it relates to you know the next step for. Um, the groundwater issues at the site. And then um, the landfill gas flare compressor equipment. Uh, we've got RPs out on the street for the flare blower skid and the compressor treatment skid. Uh, we had a uh, virtual pre proposal meeting yesterday, and um, the proposals will be due at the end of the month. Once we get a chance to review the proposals, there was a handful of vendors that participated in the meeting um, that have the plans out. Um, so once we get uh, proposals and have a chance to review them, we'll bring the results back to the solid waste board. Um, and hopefully we'll have something to have a recommendation to award uh, to keep the project of upgrading the downsizing the flare, downsizing blowers, uh, compressors at the Sunnyview uh, pub um, to keep us in a better um, situation for, for long-term, whether we continue with gas energy, which is 
I guess what is planned, but eventually we're gonna have to flare at the site here and having some some newer equipment that's sized for the flow volumes now. Right now we're running, you know, that flare is a 3000 CFM flare and we've we're producing about 550 CFM from the site. So the flare can only run down to about 400 CFM. So uh, we want our right size equipment to what the site is going to produce over the next 10 to 15 years. So, but um, so if we can get proposals, the board authorizes awards, we'll start having the vendors fabricate that equipment. But then there's going to be the installation component. And the installation component likely won't happen until 2024. What we're hearing is the from the vendors that you're looking at like six to nine months lead times for these skids. So if we get them ordered in September, we're probably not going to see the skids until you know the middle of 2024. And that'll give us time to work on an installation uh, contract where we we bid out or propose out um you know, the, the demo of the existing equipment and the installation of this new equipment. These, these vendors that provide the skids, they don't do the installation work and the, and the control work uh, to integrate things. So you have to hire a, another contractor, another vendor to perform that work. So, so I've got dollars in uh, for engineering and uh, construction in uh, 2024. So we Projected some of the expense. We had a the project. We had a, a million dollars roughly for the for the skids and the installation and engineering. We're just kind of parting it up, with keeping about five hundred thousand in this year, and then moving over uh, the rest, carry over the rest into twenty twenty four. Bottom line, with what we have in these draft documents, we've got. Uh, Projected revenues at ten million nine one eight nine hundred. Expenses at twelve million six twenty one nine eighty nine. Uh, if we back out the capital outlay of six sixty four, and then the sludge and co disposal site long term care liabilities of one hundred thousand and three hundred thousand, we are currently showing a pro projected net deficit of six thirty nine zero eighty nine. Um, that's based on the tipping fee changes on the waste side above. That's what's built in there. And then we are still holding the recycling tipping fee at $5 a ton to our municipalities. So, and that compares to last year or this year, 23, we were looking at about a $1.4 million deficit. So, so, so we're gradually climbing our way back to uh, more of a, an even, uh, level budget, uh, but we got a little, a little work to do before we get to that point. So, when we make it up on the revenue side of things, uh, from gas to energy, uh, or look at, you know, other options to to reduce, you know, to reduce expenses. So, um, one of the biggest things you'll see once we get into the budget detail is the. Um, the compensation study that was done earlier this year that uh, has changed labor and benefits uh, throughout our department um, from the second quarter on is having a large impact on the revenue projections for 2024. Um, I want to say it's probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 percent increase in the overall. Uh, labor and benefits. Yeah, 17.3%. We're up on the labor and benefits side, budget wise, compared to last year, compared to 2030. So, and that's a, basically a sole result of comp study, the salary increases, and obviously this additional position that we're looking to add. Did the comp study is that was that pretty much a, a standard increase across the board for the county in you know, our all departments? Or well, the, the comp study, study, yeah, the comp study was was pretty specialized, and um, in our department, 
everyone in the department got some sort of a, a raise out of it. What they're projecting for 24 is a combination of um, a range increase of 2% that would be across the board. Everyone would get the raise, uh, the range increase. They're not calling it a cost of living, they're calling it a range. And so the COM study ranges, they've got 2% built in that the ranges will move up, the minimums will move up, the maximums will move up 2%. But everybody will get that same 2% to stay with where they are in the range. Um, but the new piece is the merit part of things is, I believe they have 2% built in for the merit. Um, Majority of people should be able to get the merit increase, uh, but it's not guaranteed for everyone. So, but that's what they have built into these 2024 rates 2% schedule increase and then a 2% merit increase. Um, right. We don't want to get way into that wage stealing yeah. what is there, but who ultimately determines merit. How is that work? It's still a work in progress. HR is still working on, um, I guess the, the, the forms that we use, the formula that we're going to use um, to determine whether or not someone gets the 2% merit increase or they don't get it. And it sounds like it's gonna be, you either get it or you don't get it. Um, whereas previously it was, it was kind of a floating scale um, on the merit side of things. So that's still a work in progress. But, but ultimately, it'll be left up to um, department heads, supervisors um, to make the recommendations for our department. But the ultimate call must come from HR, I'm assuming. Well, I, executive or... No, I, I don't think so. I think, oh. I think the ultimate call within each department is going to fall on the department head. You know, Kathy will do her evaluations, Cassie will do hers, Ryan will do his, and then I'll look at them all and um, ultimately decide, you know, sounds good. You know, everyone gets it. Everybody but one person gets it. You know, I, but it's a work in progress. HR is still working on Finalizing the plan and finalizing the uh, evaluation forms. And um, the first year, is, so we'll be doing evaluations this fall. Um, the new parameters will go into place next year. So, as of the reviews this fall, it sounds like everybody is going to get the merit, the merit raise this year. Um, well, was there some bar set? You know, like a bottom basis and whatever where employees can improve on that. Or is it just is it gonna be just generic stuff? No, I think it's gonna it's actually gonna be what, what they've talked about is making the evaluation form uh more specific. Your goals are gonna be uh more specific and mean something. So if you set goals with an employee and they turn out to not meet the goals, then they're probably not going to get the merit raise. Um, the same goes for they're going to be adding additional uh, training, training requirements that will be built in, so it'll be goals, training, um, and there's going to be certain criteria that they have to, the employees have to follow through with the training and the goals to fully uh, meet the requirements of the merit. So it's gonna be a little more specific uh, than it has in the past where, you know, we've, we've set goals for employees every year, but we're told that the goals, you know, even if somebody didn't meet their goals, it doesn't, it doesn't apply to the merit rates. So, so. Well, I like to hear it because it sounds, yeah. sounds like there's- It's gonna be more- of the merit building. systems are, have a political, yeah, they're they're trying to get away from that. It's a good idea. Yeah. So, so, so John, of the the six hundred thousand dollar deficit, how much of that will be because of the seventeen percent increase in 
waiver clause. Yeah, just doing some rough math. If, if we're going to a gate rate of fifty six dollars, yeah. that's only a seven percent increase. But we're projecting yeah. seventeen percent on waiver. Yeah, and you know when we talk about tipping fee increases, you know our tonnages that have that hit the tipping fee increase. If you increase at a dollar, we're looking at you know roughly a hundred thousand pounds, maybe a little bit more. So each dollar only adds another hundred thousand to the bottom line. So even a four dollar increase is only adding four hundred thousand, maybe five hundred thousand in additional revenue um, from the labor labor and fringe benefits is uh, an increase of about $250,000. So the 17.3% is about $250,000. So, so we're, you know, we're increasing the revenues from the tipping fees, but we're also, our labor rates are going up. Yeah. So hopefully we went to 57, which wouldn't work with the bowl, but for conversation's sake, we went to 57. That wouldn't even cover. We'd still be short. We'd still be short. Okay. Yeah. And I think I think the goal, you know, we're we're still trying to figure out. You know, we've we've got one year under our belt of running two landfills. So 2022, we ran two landfills, and we're still, you know, we have a we have a pretty good idea of how the expenses are going to continue to track, but I think we need a couple of years of analysis under our belt to, to really fully understand uh, what those expenses are going to be and how it will affect the bull rate moving forward. So I think we're making increases in these tipping fees or we're, uh, we're proposing increases in these tipping fees, but it's not going to fully offset the additional expenses in one without soon. So trying to do it in a systematic approach and use, you know, use that retained earning, earnings cushion that we've kind of set aside to soften, you know, to the increases as we go from site to site to site to two sites. So Gary, you can remember when we started over a dollar. Yeah, that was like, well, why don't we make it 50 cents? Because cents it, it's yeah. really softer on the municipalities and their budget process and whatever. And now the, the reality of it, we last year it was four bucks. Mm -hmm. And now it's another four. Another four. So that's like, you know, that's basically 12 years. A lot of 50 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it, it's like, we were always very conservative. In, in that fact of how we raise tipping fees and whatever. So, but we had much more revenue. Right. You know, they, so that's that's what's happening. It's the reality of thing. And we're transporting and right, you know, all that stuff. We have the land fair here. Maybe we should have bought, bought another chunk of land. <laughs> that's a cash cow. We're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. But we can't put it out in the corner. No. That ain't big enough. No. <laughs> How about if we mine? How, to, how about if we eliminate that uh, the the engineer, the engineered landfill over there, mine it out, and start a new one over there? <laughs> oh boy, I won't be here. Well, you know that, that is actually that you know that's that's become common practice. Um, at, at I thought about that the other day. If you if you run into a, a, a migration that What's the way? Let's let's evaluate how do you eliminate it. Do you yep. do it with pumps and, and remediation systems, or you just mine it and get rid of it? Right, right. So you know, I'll bet you there's some cost comparisons there. Yeah, Bill there are great. sites. Yeah, there are sites that that do that exact same thing where they have like the old the old dump that's unmined, and then they progress to you know the newer regulations, and they'll. Build a new cell, flip the waste, dig out the bad, and then put in a state-of-the-art mine system in some of these old, old online sites to eliminate the source. I mean, as, as the source control. But um, they're typically sites that yeah, dry. 
Well, they're typically sites that uh, are continuing to be active. They're yeah. still on the same property, so it's it's not like you know all of a sudden you got you know hundred trucks a day driving into yeah. you know and they combine it and transport it. Right. Yeah, it's easier to move the material. Yeah, it's become pretty common nowadays as as a cleanup option for you know some of the problematic old closed online sites. So. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Um, why don't you pull up the It's too bad everybody was up here because detail. I'm assuming there's going to be yeah. some questions. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mentioned, you know, normally had we had a pretty consistent format to. to what documents were have to prepare for the, the executive budget, but it's in a little bit of uh, of flux. They've they've changed things a little bit, and not everything is uh, crystal clear out there yet. What is going away is we're not going to have a mission statement for our department. We are not going to talk about goals and objectives. So there's a new a new form that they've put together it's called a budget narrative. Uh, containing a little blurb uh, about each uh, department uh, and the budget changes. It's still a work in progress. There's the, we've all kind of drafted one, but they're all kind of all over the place. So I think we need a few more weeks and, and some uh, consultation with uh, finance and the exact office to, to fully understand what they want to see in the budget narrative. So I don't have that document. Uh, but this is what we this is what we get as far as output uh, from the financial software, which is not called Munis anymore. It's called Tyler Enterprise. RP, I don't ERP, know. <laughs> ERP, we're calling it. So, um, so basically, we input like we've done in the past. Input all the different revenues and expenses in the different cost centers. And once we have those where we think they should be in an individual cost center, then we create a roll up document, which is the entire solid waste fund. So it takes all those cost centers, pumps them into one, spits out this report. Um, what we're uh, required to do is then, based on this roll up document, look at um, the significant changes. So uh, whether it's um, on the revenue side or expense side, positive or negative, uh, you look at um, you know deviations, changes in the amounts and the percent of the request versus the adopted um, 2023 budget, and then you have to provide explanations for that. So in the past, it's been a little more. The window has been a little bit tighter. We typically had like three to four pages of variances or significant changes. But for this year, they changed it to, it needs to be a $10,000 change and 5%. Uh, so the window is a little bigger. Um, so it doesn't hit as many uh, line items here. So um, I guess, for example, the, uh, the significant changes form now is two pages long. So we have one page of revenue changes and one page of expense changes. And that's still a little bit of a work in progress. Kathy was reviewing that this morning and, and caught one item that um, needed to be changed. Um, but anyway, so we just go through, we just go through these. Um, power sales is the first one that we hit. We have 600 gentlemen. Go ahead, Doug. I'm sorry, I'm trying to multitask. I didn't mean to be butting in. Okay. I will get myself muted. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we, so we look at, like, for instance, power sales, uh, 52029. We had 400,000 budgeted last year. Now we're at 600,000. So that's a $200,000 increase, 50%. So that shows up. We have to report that on the significant changes. And we just go through each one of these line items. If it triggers the criteria of $10,000 and a 5% deviation, we provide an explanation. 
So, uh, yeah, there's bad sites and good sites that can be in conservative yeah. okay. in your budget. Yeah, this Joel's off. Yeah, so this is kind of the main detail. Cassie, if you want to pull up the significant changes document. And we're going to need to go through this uh, one more time after we're done with the board here before we finalize this and make sure we're catching everything. But um, but essentially, power sales an increase due to our current power purchase agreement rates and projected gas flows and then engine generator operation. Uh, landfill fees, uh, 45051, uh, it's an increase mainly due to the to the uh, change in the gate rate, the rug rate, and the out of, out of county, well, not the out of county rate. So, so we're up roughly $500,000. Um, and these kind of these kind of vary. Uh, other fees is basically our uh, recycling hauling charges that we get reimbursed by the regional group. Uh, so based on diesel fuel costs, current rate that we're paying and projected, it's down twenty four thousand. Uh, one of the bigger ones that Kath, Cassie was just mentioning is landfill fee is four three zero one zero. That's beneficial use and and ADC. We'll talk a little bit more about that in closed session uh, because there's some specifics that are changing related to how that is being shown from uh, a revenue standpoint. Um, yeah, so we, we go through all these different revenues, uh, changes in the municipal refunds we already mentioned, uh, out of county, the $6 per ton increase, uh, transfer station cost credit is a big one. Um, Last year we had budgeted seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for uh, the operation of our waste transfer station. Uh, that has become a shared cost with the regional group as part of the system. Um, what we were reimbursed on for twenty twenty two it were actual costs, um, and we're we're gradually uh, tweaking things within our accounting software um, to to better reflect in this cost center, in our budget, uh, what the real costs are that would be passed along to the regional group. And, you know, expenses are going up. The, the labor, labor was a big one, but, you know, we're showing a, a $210,000 increase. Um, labor and benefits, additional maintenance of the contractors, uh, some other contracted services. We've now included credit card fees. Um, from the transactions that occur on the scale here as part of a shared cost as, as uh, Brown County is doing as well. And then depreciation kind of fluctuates. Uh, we're trying to kind of tweak where the depreciation lands, uh, get it adjusted to where it should be. So all those changes um, added to this revenue item that is essentially a credit that we'll get back uh, as part of our regional agreement. And then the, the last two here are the interest. Um, we've got two accounts, one for what's invested with the general fund and the other is our long-term care account. So those are the changes there. Um, I'm still gonna have to work with finance to tweak uh, the overall total column in this form. Um, but so we've got the revenue changes that show Roughly six hundred and six thousand two hundred dollars of additional revenues when that all shook out, and then on the expense side, um, yeah. So as we talked about, we get the wages and, and fringe benefits subtotal. I just put them in there as subtotal. They may want us to break them out into all the different categories. Um, but I just summarized them for this document. Advertising, we're showing a decrease because we're not planning to do the herd go green events again in 2024. Um, okay. That was a, uh, a $12,000 expense. And uh, I don't know that it quite provided the, the bang for the buck from our advertising standpoint for 
the solid waste department. I think it was very uh, happy. We had some feedback from Jessica and that we were manning the booth yeah. that day. And They've had more interaction during farmer markets, um, outreach events. Uh, the people just didn't stop at the booth at the herd, and, and uh, there wasn't as much material being handed out. There were really some people interested in what we were. The message and the information we were trying to hand out there, so they didn't feel like it was not a good investment. That would be better for this work for that community. Um, yeah, I guess small equipment, we've, we've kind of bumped up um, some things there based on, you know, more of the um, more of the actuals that we're seeing purchased. Um, leachate extraction pumps are, have gotten really expensive to replace a leachate extraction pump in a gas well with the whole kit and caboodle, including the wellhead and whatnot. It's about $5,000 a pop. So as these, um, you know, we try to pull, clean, repair um, to maximize the life of the pneumatic uh, extraction pumps. We're having to replace a couple of year uh, at both sites. So we've added a little more money in the small equipment to um, cover those items. Um, also, Kathy's got some planned addition for cameras and actual thermal, trying out some thermal imaging cameras. Um, in the waste and recycling transportation to maybe try to help us uh, prevent uh, uh, fires in that in that building. Um, you know, some of these other things, maintenance equipment. It's uh, we're having to do a little bit more maintenance on the compactors as they age. Uh, repair maintenance supplies is a big one. Um, I don't know if it's a function of how the supplies are being charged, whether I'm coding them to a different account than what they've been coded to in the past, but we're finding that we're spending a lot on, you know, little items here for upkeep of pumps and wellheads and whatnot, and they're all landing in this 54024 cross center. So I've just bumped it up uh, to bring it more in line with what we're seeing thus far in 2023. Um, yeah, equipment repairs are up. Uh, maintenance grounds is up. Uh, one of the things that we had. There's somebody who wants to enter. Carol Patrizzi. Who is that? Not sure. I will admit them. Okay, um, as far as the maintenance grounds, one of the things that we used to do is if we knew we had areas of pavement around the site, whether on the transfer station side or the landfill side, uh, we would budget that as capital. I guess what we were told by the finance department is let's let's put that in uh, 74021, which is maintenance grounds. Typically, we have the highway department perform any uh, blacktop repairs or whatnot. Uh, so we put some additional dollars in that account, uh, just a 30000 increase. Uh, legal services um, are ratcheting down. I guess hopefully we'll, we'll get, to, uh, get to a point where we're back to more normal, uh, normal amount of legal fees. Uh, we still have a little work to do on uh, the gas side of things uh, as it relates to perhaps this new gas energy opportunity. Uh, so we've, we've ratcheted it down, but uh, not completely down back to normal conditions. Um, ground maintenance is another big one. Um, I was trying to put uh, engine four. Um, we'd, we'd like to plan to move engine four from the law enforcement center location back to Snell Road. Um, we have a location, a pad, transformer, everything will line up well at Snell Road, and then all our engines are at one location. So our maintenance person doesn't have to be running back and forth on a trailer with parts to do repairs on engine four. The uh, 
Uh, waste heat recovery system equipment is non-functional at the law enforcement center anymore. So it um, it makes some sense to move the unit back to uh, the Snell location. I was initially I'd asked to put that in capital, but I was told that uh, it probably shouldn't be a capital because it isn't any value to the asset itself. Um, so it's actually in maintenance, um, grounds maintenance, so 55007. So the big increase in that is mainly due to uh, $150,000 expense to move engine four uh, back to the snow road location. Uh, professional services that are increased. Um, we're looking at uh, hiring a, a professional website a developer to, to update our website. Um, you know, we have electrical, plumbing, HVAC repairs that happen on a regular basis that hang in this account. Um, so we've increased that, fire, fire suppression system and inspections, um, scale inspections and certifications. Those are all landing in this 5504. So we kind of brought that up to, uh, to the current uh, line of expenses. Um, even with some of the long-term planning uh, efforts, we're, we're down on the engineering architect by $30,000 based on the budget. Uh, management services is up 41.7. Uh, includes uh, UWO biodigester tipping fees, credit card fees, uh, tire recycling fees, and um, we always have to have some backup or dumpster hauling from our site here uh, in case our truck breaks down or we're short on staff. Uh, we solicit pricing from some local haulers to help us out with that. So Kathy's got that in uh, management services. Uh, regional fees uh, is down. Again, we'll get into that more a little bit in the closed session discussion. Um, Property and liability insurance um, with the new pollution liability insurance policy, we had 50,000 budgeted for this year, and the actual policy is more like 26,000 a year. So that's down. And then, Pat, here's your, your last one here amortization of single stream recycling went from 70,000 to zero. <laughs> so that's the last year, 2023 is the last year of that. that uh, uh, region so, so like I said, I need to work with Carol in finance to finalize the bottom portion. I just kind of made it kind of fit, but uh, it just shows our budgeted surplus deficit of uh, 639.089 to match the budget detail. I guess one last item here is the financial summary. Yeah, so, so typically finance is going to put this together for us at the end, but I tried to rough something together because it, it's a nice document that shows uh, kind of how it all rolls, rolls out. Um, but it shows six month actual and then our 12 month estimates for 2023. It shows the 2023 adopted budget along with the adjusted budget. And then it shows our current request in the far right column which uh, again shows the revenues at 10 million nine eighteen nine hundred, the expenses at 12 million six twenty one nine eighty nine um, gives us a, a deficit of uh, one million seven oh three oh eighty nine before the adjustments backing out capital outlay backing out the two long term care liability accounts yields that six thirty nine oh eighty nine deficit. So again. Before this gets finalized, um, we'll have uh, the finance department verify these numbers with our budget detail. But I wanted to at least have something for you during the today. So, I guess any other questions with what we talked about today? There's a few other documents you'd like to walk you through and talk you through in, in closed session as it relates to our. 
specific customer revenues kind of is and the media number. So, a lot of information. Yeah. Did we didn't get it all yet. <laughs> We're working at it. Right. Well, I, the, the process simply always amazes me in how it's never seamless. It, it, it's either the finance department changes the process, the county executive gets new, newly elected, this and everybody wants a change, and it it all yeah, it's always another hurdle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they were they were looking to do some some big changes to our budget for 24 this year, but based yeah. on timing and everything else going on, that that's gotten pushed. To 2025, so there'll be some really big changes for next year as we move toward the priority-based budgeting uh, right. system. But and what they should be doing is making it easier for departments to fit into that process instead of making it convenient for them. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, it, I don't know. It was just. And I don't know if Kathy or Kathy can comment, but all day. went through some of the training exercises. It's just so different. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around where it was going. And we we only got part of it. And then the administration decided, let's just stick with the current format because it's just too much, uh, too much to try to do both at the same time. So I think we'll we'll learn more. We'll have more training, uh, hopefully in the off season uh, to learn more about it and then can hit the ground running next summer. Uh, with the yeah, they could start on this process right after Christmas. Yeah, and then probably, yeah. You know, so that still never gets done. So yeah, anyway, so that, I guess off the record. <laughs> that's what we have You're for you right. in, I know, right? in the open session. So and you want to go in the closed session? I'd like to go into a closed session and talk about it. Would you like to, since Paul and Doug are here, would you like to make a to go into the closed session? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. You want to read the whole thing, right? Yeah, oh, yes. You have to do that. Okay. You didn't do that last night. I noticed oh, that. Oh, yeah. I thought Tom did. I thought Tom read it. Oh, Tom did. Oh, Tom did. Didn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can't yeah. imagine. I, usually that comes from the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, Tom read it. Marianne had Tom read it. I'm sorry, I missed okay. that. It must have been the morning. Pursuant to section 19.851E, Wisconsin statutes, at this point of the meeting, the board shall consider a motion to convene into closed session for the purposes of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business. Whenever competitive or bargaining reason require a closed session in relationship to the 2023 side 2024 tonnage and revenue report and 2024 tipping fees, make a motion to when we close session. Second, got a motion made in a second. We need a Jerry, yes, Kevin, aye, Howie, aye, Pat, aye, Jim, aye. That motion has carried. We are now in. Closed session. One second. Oh, there you go. I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendations of the director and staff. So moved. Second. Your discussion. Motion has been made to accept the recommendations of the director and the staff on the 2024 budget. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Five to nothing. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. We have to, what is the next? Right. Yeah, I guess right now the next meeting with normal one would be the Wednesday after Labor Day, the sixth. Um, Yeah, I guess I'm not exactly sure that there's certain things that I'm kind of waiting for, but I don't think they're going to be ready for the 6th. We're looking at probably a, maybe a little busier meeting on the 20th with presentation about the other options for landfill gas energy. 
Um, the 20th had in some RFP results from the equipment vendors. Um, yeah. So. Well, I, I think then probably because if, if something comes up budgetary wise, yeah. I, th I think we'll just you know have a meeting or have some special meeting or something to do, deal with anything we got to deal with yeah. whatever the rest. You know, if you're not comfortable, if you don't have enough agenda, I certainly yeah, we don't want to just come here and put my time in. Yeah. So if you need a, a meeting, you could call one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that, Jeff. Uh, the sixth is right after the board has their meeting. You know, on Tuesday. Well, that's right. You have a special well, that's a big one. That's yeah, the whole right. the task force is reporting then. And so, and we're not voting at the at level. We're right. probably going to get a lot of questions. This going to be a good week for you all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all if I have a meeting at this time. Yeah. I guess if, but yeah. if the need arises, we're usually done with the county board meetings by nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the best hour we do. We could replay something. <laughs> okay. You just well, make the call. Yeah. I guess yeah. let's so, just let's just, just plan for a meeting, the next meeting being September 20th. Yeah. And if we need something special related to budget or other, then we'll, I guess, reach out to everyone and, and uh, call them. And make okay. It. Then you, what you should do is send the five members that we're not going to have that. Yeah. Because they kind of, you know, they're yeah. scheduled out and whatever and stuff. So I'm yeah. make sure we don't upset anybody. Right. Or whatever. So that's good. Other than that, we need a, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 That is carried. We are adjourned.